Hi, and welcome to the May edition of Network on Television. I'm Mike McClure. And I'm Sharon Bennett. We're at the Apprentice Training Center up on First Hill. City Light Apprentices use the center, housed in an old substation building, as a base for some of their training needs. We'll take a look around this month. But first, we've got a lot of information to share with you, beginning with City Light's strategic corporate plan. Since our last update a couple of months back, there's been a lot of work going on to determine the essential elements of the strategic corporate plan. It's called a framework for the future. And we'll have a special video and much more information for you when the employee forums start next month. The strategic corporate plan begins with a simple definition of why we're in business at Seattle City Light. To sustain and enhance our community's quality of life by providing excellent energy services. The plan unites much of our work started over the last couple of years, including our corporate goals, employee survey action plans, and City Light's vision which is to be the most customer-focused, competitive, efficient, and innovative community-owned utility by the year 2000. Our communication efforts, including NTV stories and City Light's written publications, will stem from the SCP's direction as we continue to keep City Light's four utility goals at the forefront of our efforts. The strategic corporate plan and the goals influence all the work we do at City Light. The goals are customer satisfaction, employee satisfaction, safety and financial stability or maintaining low rates even with a rate surcharge seattle continues to offer the lowest electric rates of any major american city and due to drought conditions the rate surcharge was needed again this year the city council passed an eight point nine percent surcharge which goes into effect june first and will last through february nineteen ninety five the surcharge and one million dollars in utility cost cuts will cover the $23 million revenue shortfall. It's always a rush to prepare budgets. And for 1995, many of us are making difficult decisions on budget cuts. Once again, a budget review team is looking at areas within the utility to examine how Seattle City Light is conducting business. Well, the committee is made up of uh, uh, representatives of the direct reports to uh, Roberta. Uh, uh, the committee is trying to focus on uh, specific issues that we have identified and then got sanctioned by the executive team, such as uh, contracts, intergovernmental services, uh, the administrative cost of 1% for art, um, uh, over and under expenditures uh, by SFMS accounts, uh, and centralized and decentralized uh, budgeting opportunities uh, for the department. What we hope to do is uh, once we have done our research and looked at opportunities for uh, better budgeting, uh, that we will uh, present our recommendations to the executive team, who at that time will make a decision as to if we're going to reduce budgets, uh, add to some budgets, uh, change some of our budgeting methods uh, that we've used in the past, or try something different. The team approach offers a balanced viewpoint on budget priorities for the whole utility. As we saw before, training is taking place here today at First Hill, where apprentices are using the setups to refresh skills on tower rescue, vault rescue, and other safety procedures. Safety is one of our corporate goals, and reducing on-the-job injuries and illness applies to all of us, whether in the field or an office setting. Right, Mike. You know, 46% of us, nearly half at City Light, do work in offices. And the Office Safety Committee focuses on helping us achieve our safety goal. Committee Chair Laura McLean says since 28% of last year's on-the-job injuries occurred in office settings, they look for ways to reduce and avoid office safety hazards. Many members of the Office Safety Committee have uh, become attracted to becoming members because they are interested in air quality. They have special problems when, for instance, someone uses hairspray without thinking, it can really impact another employee. One of the uh, sources of, of indoor air quality problems that we would never really think about is something like this lovely plant, which I was given for Secretary's Day. It's beautiful, but it belongs at home. The reason is because uh, mites and other um, insects will fly into the air and 
they uh, cause problems. So take the plant home. Safe lifting, not tripping over wires or electrical monuments, knowing the location of first aid kits nearest you, and ergonomically correct work habits are other office safety concerns. Representatives from all org units and divisions are invited to the next meeting, June 14th. Call Laura McLean at 684-3885 for information. As some of us continue to unpack from moves around City Light, the Human Resources Division has settled into their new digs on the fifth floor of the 1111 building. They held an open house to welcome others and let employees know where to come for training, payroll, and other HR needs. More than 100 people visited, enjoyed refreshments, and some completed a map of unit locations to win a door prize. Brenda Wu from Project Management was the winner of a lunch at Mel's. Sounds like a pretty tasty treat. Mike, I see we've got another tasty treat right here in front of us. Yep, a cookie from the Skagit Cookhouse. Pretty popular with employees who stay up at the Skagit. I know, and this year, due to customer requests, cookies and other tasty snacks will be available for sale during Skagit tour season at a new snack bar and souvenir stand they're setting up at the base of the incline lift. The tours have been updated to appeal to more visitors, give customers wider choices, maximize ticket sales, and increase the profitability of the tours in keeping with our corporate goals. The historic incline lift was rebuilt and automated this past winter to streamline operations and lower labor costs. There are also some new ticket options this year with special discounts for families. Tours start June 16th and there'll be special fall weekend tours this year too. For employees only, there's a telephone number you can call for reservations and information. It's 386-4394. Should be a great summer up at the Skagit. Those cookies look pretty great, too, so save me some for after the shoot, okay? Yeah, right, Sharon. You know, there's a savings campaign going on at City Light this month. The United States Savings Bond Campaign makes it easy to save for the future, especially for a child's education through easy payroll deductions. If you have any questions, call Della Morris in the Wholesale Deputy's Office at 386-4500. Well, hopefully we all continue our educations as we update our skills through training. But some city lighters spend a significant time teaching, too, through either our Junior Achievement Program or as tutors at Ballard High School. Mike Honeycutt and Naomi Oka of Finance work with high schoolers on their Spanish skills. I like the contribution I feel like I'm, I'm making in Richard's life. I've seen him kind of gain confidence in not only Spanish but his other classes and just knowing I think for him that someone's going to be there every week that's um, taking time out of their day I think it makes him feel really important. The tutoring gives the students something to look forward to as well as a way to boost their grades. It helped me raise my grade and she said that my tutor would help me a lot. Richard's teacher really appreciates the help from the City Light Partnership. For example, with Richard, we wanted to raise his GPA by like one grade point average, and we set out to do that, and we did it. Then last year, it was very successful. Mike had a couple of students um, each semester, different students, and he was so good, very good about coming, showing up. The student was very good about showing up also, and so their GPAs were raised. While it's tough to break away from our regular work, to give back to the community, there are some rewards. I feel like I've accomplished something with the students. Um, it gives me a lot of accomplishment, especially if I, they're doing well. If I see improvement there, that's, that's a sense of a real accomplishment. And if you feel like you've been able to make some kind of impact on somebody to help maybe make their life better or help them with their whatever they need to do, it's, it's, a, it's a rewarding feeling. For more information on educational outreach in the schools, call Mark Van Oss at Corporate Communications, 684-3279. You know, I'm working on Junior Achievement right now, and it's a great experience. Yeah, it really is, and I'm about ready to experience some of these Skagit Cookhouse cookies. Hey, what's this? This is all you left me? Guess you'll have to go up to the cookhouse to get some more. I guess so. We might need to film another NTV up at Skagit sometime this summer. Meanwhile, from the Apprentice Training Center on First Hill, I'm Mike McClure. And I'm Sharon Bennett for Network on Television. See you next month. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.